And now for something completely different. A man in a green room. Hi, let's go ahead and see how we can create that sort of effect inside of Blender. We're going to take that footage with the green in the background and use Blender to get rid of the background and then put something else there instead. So it appears that the subject or talent is in front of something entirely different. Okay, so uh, to get started, the first thing I should talk about is the footage itself. There are many good videos on YouTube that explain uh, what's best in terms of creating that initial footage, like how far away your subject should be from the background and what sort of lighting you should use. So please do go watch those videos if you want to record the footage. So the only thing that I want to say about it is the more consistent the background is, the easier it's going to be. So no shadows, no, um, no creases if the backdrop is some kind of fabric. Just one solid color is what you want. Okay, so with all that said, let's get started. I've already got the video open inside of the video sequence editor. So as I scrub through, you can see this is pretty much what we were just looking at at the start of this video. I have a marker set because uh, I like to, before I get into the actual uh, compositing work, I like to set up markers to indicate where I need to start paying attention. Um, and in this case, I want to basically create this effect for everything from what I've called the start point. So I'll use the marker menu to jump to that exact position. And I don't care about getting this effect working properly for anything past that point, just from this point on. Now, what else can we see here? Uh, here inside of the properties editor, we can see that uh, everything else is already set up with the resolution at 1080 and a pretty high frame rate. Uh, normally I deal with 30 frames per second, so this is kind of exciting. Uh, anyway, so there we go. Uh, we've got everything set up here, so now let's start the work. The first thing that I like to do is to create a copy of this scene. So we're going to do that. Click this button up here, full copy. That way we get uh, all of the scene settings, the resolution, the frame rate, uh, but also the markers. Now we don't need the strips, so I'll press letter A to select all, and then X to delete. Okay, I will also change the name of this scene. So I'll call this uh, for compositing, because that's what we're about to do. Okay, now we can get into the compositor as soon as we add that workspace. So go over here and click on the plus button and then under VFX, choose compositing. Okay, so we are in the compositor and uh, as we've seen in previous videos, the first thing to do is click on use nodes. And now I'm going to left click on this to select this render layers and press X to delete because we don't need that. So what we do need is the movie clip input node. So I will press shift A to bring up the add menu, go to input and movie clip. And then I will place that right over here. And along the right hand side, I am going to go over here to properties because this is an easier way of seeing it. You get to see all of the options on these nodes. And over here, I'll click on open and select my file. That same video file that we saw in the video sequence editor. So there it is. Now to be able to see this in the background, I'm going to hold down on control, shift, and then left click on this node. And there we go, there it is. It's too big though. So I will press down on the alt key and press the home key. There we go. Now it's nice and zoomed. And uh, while we're at it, you know, let's press the home key over here so I can see the full uh, timeline. Up. I'm going to shift things around a bit. Actually, I'll press the home key first. That didn't zoom in too much. Okay, I'll just use the mouse wheel here. And I'll shift these things around. I usually like to have the viewer all the way at the right side, the composite node up there as well. Now, we've got our input, and really, there's not much to do here. We just need to bring in the one node that can do 
pretty much everything you need to do for this green screen effect. It is called the keying node. So let's add it. And this time I'll use the add menu up here. So click add and it's under the mat group and down over here, there it is keying. So I'll click that. And this is quite a large node. I'm going to stick it right here so that it is uh, going over this line between movie clip and viewer. You can see it changes color as I uh, hover over it. That means it will automatically connect up in the right spots. So click there. And now if I uh, come down, you can see the image output from our movie clip is now going into the image input socket of the keying node. And similarly, the image output socket is going into our viewer. You may have noticed that as soon as I did that, something did happen in the background. Let me move these around. You can see it has already started to apply the effect, but it's doing it against the wrong color. So what we can do, we can either click here or I can scroll down and click over here. I'll do that. Click on this and this interface pops up. We just need to click on the eyedropper and then click on any part of the background, I guess, because it's all relatively the same color, or at least it looks that way to me. So it looks like it worked pretty well. Um, I don't think it's perfect, but let's scrub through the footage and see. Burn. And, but what I do see is that it does look like there's some changes going on in the background. Now, usually, uh, it can get a little bit hard to see just by looking at the image output. So what we're going to do is hold down on control shift and left click again on this same node to switch it to look at the matte output instead of image. And by doing that, you can see, yeah, that actually isn't working great. So when it comes to working with mats, anything that's fully white is going to be totally opaque, totally 100% visible. And anything that is completely black will be invisible, totally transparent. So we can see for me, I show up pretty much solid white as expected. Looks like there's a little bit of darkness here that's probably from the glasses and I'm okay with that. And so is the table, but as I click through here, you can see that the background is generally not completely black. Let's actually see how this is going to look if we just take it as is before we do any changes to the settings here. So what we're going to do then to be able to make use of this is click and drag from the image output socket of the keying node to the image input socket of your composite node. That way, now uh, Blender will know that this is the result that we want to send back and work with anywhere else. So we've got that set up. Let's jump back over to video editing. And over here, I need to change this back to the original scene. So I'll click scene here. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to jump to the start of the scene. And then I will hide this. I can press the H key or in this case, I'll just click this checkbox. Make that disappear. Next thing I'm going to do is add a color. So I'll press Shift A and go down to color. And I will extend this all the way out. Doesn't have to be exact. And I will change that color. So let's go over here and drag that up and let's just change it to, let's go with some kind of purple. All right. And then finally, now let's go ahead and add the output from the compositor. So this time I'll click up here under add and choose scene. And the only option we have, because we only have two scenes, this is what we were working on here. Click that. And there we go. Let's see how that looks. So should be starting from the start point. So I'll jump to next marker and click through. I can see here that it's getting darker as I go through like that is definitely a different shade. 
So let's go back into the compositor and fix that mat so that it really is just the uh, subject, the, the talent, plus anything in the foreground, and the background is definitely not present. Before we go back to the compositor, I'm going to click on this thumbtack. By clicking on this thumbtack, uh, Blender will remember which scene we used with which workspace. A nice little handy feature. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go to compositing, and uh, it's already set, but you know what, let's click that over here as well. So now as we jump between them, yeah, it remembers. Okay, anyway, so let's fix the mat. Now we're going to look at the options we have for keying. So I'm going to click on this keying node so that we can see all of the options here. And I'll uh, expand this out a bit more. Now before I say anything else about this, as you can see, there are many options. So what I would like to do is turn your attention to this browser. Uh, Blender has some fantastic documentation. Uh, so this one in particular, you can see, you can go here and uh, get descriptions on every single one of these options and what the outputs are, and also some tips about how to use the node. So very good reference. I, I come here a lot when I want to learn about new things in Blender. Uh, for this tutorial, and it looks like the only thing we need to work on is this thing, Clip Black. So as you can see from the pop-up, uh, value of non-scaled matte pixel, which considers as fully background pixel. And right now it's set to zero. Essentially the idea is, as we increase this value up to a max of one, then anything in the background, uh, which we think should be, um, eliminated, yeah, it does eliminate more and more as we increase the value. So I'm going to click and drag, and as I bring the value higher up, you can see we're only at 0.145, and it got rid of most of it, but not all of it. There's still some here at the corners. So let's keep bringing it up. Oh, that looks like it's pretty much all gone. Okay, let me uh, take a look. I'm going to press and hold on the Alt key and then use the middle mouse button to kind of pan around. It looks like it's mostly gone. Okay, let's click around on the timeline to see. Uh, there's still a little bit there. Okay, let's just increase that a bit more. Okay, so that looks like that's gone. Let's jump ahead and still looking pretty good. Still looking pretty good. Oh, over here, that didn't that didn't work out. So let's increase the value some more, and even more. Okay, that's looking better now. Let's again use the Alt key and then middle mouse button to look around. And yeah, yeah, that's. I think it's okay now. So this looks pretty good now. I think it's decent. Uh, now, one thing um, I just wanted to show you real quick, you don't want to go too far. Let's see what happens when I bring it up even higher. Yeah, every, now other things start becoming uh, translucent or transparent now. You want to find the right number. You can't just bring it all the way up. It, that won't work. So I'll press Ctrl Z to bring it back to original value. And let's uh, see the other options. So I'm going to... Uh, press this again, control shift, left click to return to that view, just to see. And I think this is better. So let's go back to video editing and take a look over here. It should look good. And I think it does. I think that looks very good. So one thing I am noticing though, is that it looks like my desk is now a bit purple, which would mean that uh, the desk itself is transparent and allowing the purple background to come through. It's not supposed to be. So let me uh, unhide the original video and bring it up top so we can see. Yeah, it wasn't purple to begin with, but it's purple now. So let's try to fix that. We'll go back into compositing, and I'm looking here, 
And yeah, it do, that does kind of look like it's not fully white. So what can we do here? I think the answer is the other value that's just under clip black, which is clip white. So the same idea here with clip black, we're trying to raise the value so more of the background would be considered as background. So with clip white, we want to reduce this value and then more of the foreground or subject or talent or what have you will be considered as proper uh, subject material, not the background. So let's go ahead and reduce this value. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to pay attention over here. In fact, let's zoom in. Uh, the key I think is V. No, it's not. It is Alt V. So I'll press Alt V a few times. And then I will hold down on Alt and drag this over so I can get a good look over here. As I'm doing that, I can see that we also have some darkness over here. So let's pay attention and see how that looks as I bring this value down just by clicking and dragging. Mm. Yeah, I can see it's being converted to fully white. Let's bring it down this much. Okay, all right. Let's uh, zoom it out again and just jump around on the timeline to see how that looks. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's good. So let's go back to video editing and see if that fixes it. Doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. Just needed to click somewhere to get a refresh. There we go. So now, not purple at all. It is the original color. And we are in business. So at this point, we could go ahead and do our rendering. All right, so that's it for this video. Some other things to note before we close off. The keying node, it does a lot. It's, it's an all-in-one node, as described inside of Blender's documentation. Uh, so it has additional features, such as this dilate slash erode, which uh, is something that I covered specifically uh, in my previous video about static background removal. Um, as well, this isn't the only node that you can use for green screen effects. The other one that comes to mind is chroma key, which just does the green screen removal and nothing else. So um, keying typically is the easier option. So that's what we've been talking about, but that is something else that you could look into. Uh, and finally, there are some things that we will be talking about in a future video, uh, specifically these two here, which you can see here that are two input sockets to the keying node, garbage and core. These will be very useful if, for example, your subject, your uh, talent has uh, some color on them that is similar to the background color you're trying to get rid of. So the core will allow you to retain that. Uh, and the garbage would be the flip of that. If there's something really difficult to get rid of just through the color selection, you can create a mask to get rid of that. So garbage and core, those are both mask inputs that you can use. And we will talk about that in our next video. So that's it for now. Hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do give this a like and consider subscribing to see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.